What's up guys, it's in, it's gone, and today we'll be looking at five positional sleepers for the 2023 fantasy baseball season. Opening day is just around the corner, which means fantasy baseball drafts are too, and with the long wait since the end of last season, it's important to review potential players that should have been targeted going into drafts. Last year, I had a couple of really good picks like Ty France and Eugenio Suarez, and some Mez like Cattell Marte and Key Brian Hayes. But overall, I believe that I did well. Furthermore, most of the players are still sleepers a year later, so watch that video for a couple more players, although their stats might be a bit outdated. But this time, I'll be using Yahoo Fantasy for the draft rankings as it has their average draft positions along with Yahoo's rankings of them. Although other sites like ESPN will definitely have some players way off from others, it can be assumed that all players are roughly in the same spot, give or take a few. As we gear up for another thrilling year of baseball, it's time to start thinking about the players who might not be on everyone's radar but could make a significant impact on your fantasy baseball team. But before we get onto the video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button? Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but it also encourages me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. I like Tristan Casas going into the season as one of the prime candidates for a sophomore surge. And although technically he hasn't graduated yet from his prospect status and is going to be a rookie this year, but that's besides the point. Right now, he's a 20th round pick in most leagues, where most of the players around him aren't even guaranteed starting roles, like Chris Taylor and Jordan Walker. Casas will be your quintessential guy to put in and get home runs, while also walking a ton, boosting any category that rewards on base percentage such as popular OPS. This guy has shown the power throughout his entire minor league career to be a guy who can hit 35 home runs and given a slight change to his approach that promotes more contact, we can see some Matt Olson type numbers from this guy, even with slightly better plate discipline. He's had an entire offseason to learn from his cup of coffee in the big leagues and should make big strides this offseason. However, currently being a guy who kind of sells out for the home run ball whenever deciding to make contact, he will kill that batting average that you have. This was shown to be the extreme last year, where he hit a 197 but still hit 5 home runs in 72 plate appearances. I believe that the ugly batting average numbers will scare many people off of him, allowing us to swoop in for the high upside play with minimal risk being so low. Down in the 20th rounds and later, powers at a premium and Tristan Casas is your guy. In the hustle and bustle of the offseason, it can be pretty common for signings to go under the radar, especially those that come from overseas markets. While the Boston Red Sox signed Masataka Yoshida to the largest contract ever given to a Japanese position player ever this offseason, and you don't hand out $90 million for a guy who's just going to be a league average hitter. In fact, this Yoshida has legitimate odds to be your AL batting crown while challenging elite players like Paul Goldschmidt and Bryce Harper for the lead in OPS or weighted ones runs created. He was so good in Japan, with a batting average last year of 336 and an OPS over 1 across 121 Japan games. This in is in a league where people deem it to be better than AAA, and for a guy like this, you should be having to spend a 5th to 7th round pick vying for that elite upside while still understanding that many Japanese players struggle with the transition to America. However, you can get him in the 16th round. Um, I don't have any cool introduction to this, but Gabriel Moreno is someone that needs to be drafted in most fantasy formats, even if you just take a flyer in the last round at the end of your bench. This guy was one of the top prospects in all of baseball just before graduating at the end of 2022. He's got elite bat-to-ball skills and almost never strikes out, hitting the ball to all fields and finding gaps a lot of the time. Although he won't hit for consistent power, and I project him to finish the season with around 15 home runs, his contact skills are elite. It's no stretch that he can keep his batting average around 300 for that season, and from the catching position in those late rounds, I'd love to stack him on my bench with some other mid-catcher. Right now, he's going to be in a platoon of sorts with him and Carson Kelly, kind of in a deadlock for that catching spot on the Arizona Diamondbacks. However, he's going to find himself to be the starting catcher sooner or later, and when he is, you're going to want him on your roster as a catcher that can rake. In shallower leagues or leagues in which there aren't that many bench spots, keep your eyes peeled for Moreno on your waiver wire. 
and make sure to pull the trigger on him at the first sign of a catching change in Arizona, such as a Carson Kelly trade or injury, or just keep an eye on the Arizona Dimebacks lineup if Moreno plays more than Ke Kelly. Um, this list so far has all been newer players to the league, so let's switch gears and talk about a couple of veterans who have a good chance of performing past their projections. Michael Conforto was a projected 15th round pick, and with an injury preventing him from playing in the 2022 season and a down 2021 year, many people forgot the four-year stretch from 2017 to 2020, in which he was one of the premier bats in the league. He posted an LPS plus greater than 120 in all of those seasons and hit more than 25 home runs in each of his full seasons with the Mets. After less than two years from playing in competitive baseball, it makes sense why he's so low. However, Conforto should be perfectly healthy and ready for a bounce back 2023. Although moving to a pitcher friendly Oracle Park doesn't really help the matters, power hitting left handed bats like Jock Peterson seem to thrive here, and I think that Conforto could fit the same mold as a power hitting left handed hitter. Lastly, we have the biggest steal in many drafts. See, this is why I get you to watch the end and a popular sleeper among many in Cody Bellinger. Although he fell off a cliff in the 2020 season, he has been steadily climbing back up to be a solid player with the Dodgers. Given that the Dodgers were pressed against attacks this offseason, they chose to cut him. And many people believe that it was because his career was over, there's just too many strikeouts, his launch angle was too high. However, he's still a very good player, at least defensively, and the Cubs made sure to let everyone know that by giving him a one-year prove-it deal worth $16.5 million. Moving away from a very pitcher-friendly stadium in Dodger Stadium to a neutral Wrigley Field should help a little bit to his hitting mechanics, but the real change to Bellinger is going to be the new shift and how it affects his mechanics. It's old news that Bellinger fell off he, because he hurt his shoulder sometime during the 2020 season, which did work to his swing, making it exponentially worse. Two years of experimenting has led to mixed results, with some of his hard contact remaining, but with an average launch angle way too high due to a miscalculation in his swing. Given the ban on the shift, Bellinger is more incentivized to swing level and maybe hit more line drives and ground balls, which are now more likely to go through for hits. I'm predicting a career resurgence for Bellinger with the Cubs, and it's a steal with the 15th round pick. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. Also, comment down below if I got it right, did I get it wrong, what players did I miss, or what players do you disagree with. The Fantasy Pitchers one is coming out soon, and if you guys want to see that one, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification down below so you're notified when that one comes out. should come out tomorrow if you're watching it on the day that this video came out. But, and after that, there's going to be some more fantasy content. I'm thinking about making five videos overall. But if you guys have any other ideas about fantasy, I have one on prospects and like positional breakdown. But basically the same thing as last year. But if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.